from Seeds of Learning. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Okay. Go. Hi, my name is Dora Sweetalk, and today I'm giving a presentation on Greek mythology. Greek mythology does not deserve to be confined to the annals of the ominous, dreaded, menacing, odoriferous, well, you find they're not odoriferous, textbooks. Greek mythology, after all, um, is a fascinating subject that reaches far beyond a civilization that you may think deserves to be confined to the dust. Who cares about textbooks? But no, Greek mythology is a very interesting subject full of gory battles between the titans and the gods upon Mount Olympus and all of the blood and gore and all sorts of things involved in battles between the supernatural and the mortals. So Greek mythology is simply riddled with all of these little bits of interesting battle. And um, there's also a lot of nude portraits for those who are interested in the more, let's say, stuff your parents do not allow part, and yet you're allowed to go through all these nude portraits without a single murmur from your teacher who will simply remark on your interesting devotion to Greek mythology <laughs> and simply mutter on how Botticelli's Birth of Venus was inspired by Greek mythology and not say a single word that you're pouring over a naked body. Greek mythology is also also has quite an influence on our what we do today. From the cartoon surfers, Greek mythology influences cartoons little as much you might think. And it also gives us words like Apollinian, Mercurial, that while you while you think that they're just the result of some old sages weird murmurings, they're really from Greek mythology, and so it gives us a firm and deep understanding of today's um, today's culture. So I think the Greek mythology is not something that's bitten by the dust of the years and ravaged by time. Greek mythology lives on and on, and does not deserve to be confined to such lowly positions.